everybody, I'm Dennis Daly, standing along a four-lane section of Highway 99 in Merced, California, smack in the middle of the San Joaquin Valley. This road wasn't always a four-lane route. It was once a narrow, dangerous two-lane highway, and before that, a connected series of wagon roads. John Steinbeck wrote about 99 in Grapes of Wrath. The Jode family may have come west on Route 66, but it looked for work in the Promised Land along Highway 99. This road is known internationally, for it is the most heavily traveled and used agricultural delivery route in the world. And it might not be here at all, were it not for the coming of the railroad. As the nation was getting back together after the Civil War, the Southern Pacific Railroad began laying track down the center of the San Joaquin Valley. As construction continued, many farmers were evicted, finding their leases had been sold to the railroad. But on the positive side of things, those living near the railroad began to use an adjacent service road as a primitive highway. Soon it became a wagon road. When state legislators saw the need for an organized grid of automobile highways, they decided to develop this wagon road and call it Legislative Highway Number 4. Workers improved the often rutted wagon road, adding gravel. Eventually, it would be hard surfaced. After a decade or so, Washington got into the act, setting up the federal highway system, and California 4 became US 99. Only one major north-south west coast route would have a higher number, US 101, running nearer the Pacific coast. By the late 1920s, US 99 signs began going up. First, they were seen along the Grapevine. That serpentine road with a 15 mile per hour speed limit may not seem a super highway by today's standards, but in the 1920s, what they called the Ridge Route was a marvel of highway making, shortening the travel time from LA to Bakersfield by four hours. Stretches of that original highway still remain. Notice on this photo what was once called Dead Man's Curve and see how close it is now to the alignment of I-5, cutting straight through the area. Now that 99 was a federal highway, money was flowing from Washington to continue improvements. By the 1930s, there was a seamless two-lane ribbon from LA to Sacramento. As traffic increased, some sections were three-lane. The idea was to provide a bi-directional passing lane down the middle. But traffic officers found these middle lanes were deadly. Head-on crashes were common as people played chicken in no man's land. The push to four-lane 99 got underway in the mid-30s. Soon the four-lane reached Merced. The 99 right-of-way was down 16th Street, but only two lanes at first. In order to four-lane 99 through the city, a major widening had to take place. Up to that time, there were overhead archways at both ends of downtown. Here's the original one, just shy of V Street looking south. Note that until the major reconstruction work on 16th Street happened in the late 30s, there was a bridge just shy of V Street. It crossed a tributary of Bear Creek called the Slough. 16th Street was widened to four lanes, the slough was filled in, the bridge taken away, and a wider arch was erected. It was during this major reconstruction of the 99 corridor, during the summer of 1939, that the four-lane bridges over Bear Creek were built, slightly northeast of the old alignment. During the Second World War, Old 99 was full of troop movements and the shipments of military supplies, along with the usual complement of agricultural products feeding the nation and fueling the war effort. After the war, America tried to get back to normal with more and more people taking vacations. The increased traffic on Highway 99 was taking its toll on the right-of-way through downtown Merced and the patience of the people here. Longtime area resident Realtor Gail McCulloch remembers when 99 was often gridlocked, especially when the 1950s turned into the 1960s. It was so busy, it was bumper to bumper. You had everything from people out shopping going through there to tourists that had to go through there. You had tomato trucks going through there. You knew when you got on 16th Street, you were stuck for maybe 45 minutes just to get through. The old highway and 16th Street had become a familiar 
familiar stopover for many passing through the valley. Wonderful service stations, as we called it then. You'd roll in, they check the oil, and they check the water, and they check your tires, and nobody ever had to get out of their car unless they wanted to. Many found Merced a friendly place with good service, great food, and adequate lodging. It really was a stopping point. You can see some of the old motels down there at that end. They were really pretty busy because it was a long haul to Yosemite for a long time, you know, and cars boiled over. I remember there was a radiator business down on 16th Street. He did a roaring business on a hot day. At night, the tower of the old downtown theater, recently relit, was a beacon for travelers, as well as the sign atop the Tioga Hotel. The Tioga sign you could see for miles. It was on top, one of the fanciest, best signs in the world. And I think that it uh, it was in disrepair and someone else bought the building and it's a shame that it's gone. Some modernization of 99 had begun in the early 50s, but it would not be until 1963 that the road was four-laned and elevated through Merced, taking traffic off 16th Street. Before construction began, the question was where to put the block-wide corridor. Put it too close to 16th and you would have required major movement of electrical lines and equipment. Moving it between 12th and 13th would have meant raising a church and a busy school. The decision was made to use the corridor between 13th and 14th. Not much there, but aging housing, some warehouses, and the remnants of Merced's Chinatown. Some of Caltrans' plans had been put in limbo when the federal government debated just where to put Interstate 5. Originally, it was to have come through Merced, supplanting 99. The final plans would take it to the west side of the valley, and with it, a lot of money went west. When I-5 was completed, 99 lost its federal status, becoming California 99. There are still some remnants of the era when 99 was a U.S. highway. There is one overhead sign near Atwater where you can clearly see how the original larger federal shields were placed. Its outline shows outside the current state shield. Even a lobbying group trying to get votes on a ballot measure several years ago forgot that 99 is now a state highway and used the old federal shield in its advertising. Even some highway markers in Merced still bear the old federal highway long haul destinations. If 99 had begun as a state highway, the arrow would have pointed toward Fresno. But because it was a national road at one time, the designation was really long haul, Los Angeles. But changes in the road in Merced County have been slow in coming. While much of California 99 through the valley has been totally modernized and some of its six laned, it's only been the past few years that the rural bottleneck on 99 has been eased here in the county with the elimination of median crossovers and the addition of clover leaves. Still, this part of the valley is the final section of 99 awaiting final upgrading. And if 99 ever reaches interstate standards and is made into a true interstate, what will it be called? Interstate 99 is already taken, and according to the national numbering system, it cannot be used on the West Coast. Most say that US 99, which became California 99, will eventually become Interstate 9. And one other thing. In the parking lot of a local radio station, where the CHP used to have an office, is a great example of what two-lane Highway 99 looked like before World War II. It was never used as 99, but built to highway standards as a driveway for the highway patrol. In Merced, the past still lives, and the present continues to hang on. There's just a spirit of downtown that says, we're going to continue, we will make it. Thank you.